depth. I don't reflect back enough on how much things have changed. When I first started, I, I didn't even think about going into surgery because there were no women in surgery. It just didn't seem like a possibility. Cynthia Shortel, Duke University. But I loved it, and so I, I applied and I got in. But when I was a resident, there was one other resident in the five, other, in the five years of training that I did that was a woman. I was always the first, the first woman fellow, the first woman professor at Duke, the first woman division chief. And now it's like, you look in the operating room and it's not uncommon to see no men at all. And sometimes I have to pinch myself, you know, to see how far we've really come and what's a pretty short period of time. And while I know um, in my talk I highlighted that we still have a long way to go, I think it's also really good to celebrate how far we've come. My key message was that we can't just wait passively for things to change. Things have really come a long way, but if you think about the things that I highlighted in my talk, we still have hit a bit of a plateau in terms of the leadership roles that women have in our surgical societies and our institutions. And I think part of that is because leadership determines leadership. And so my message was that we need our leaders to help us create leaders that are more representative of our patients and our other doctors and our society. I think there are a lot of ways people can be involved. Um, I think it depends perhaps on what your, your roles are, what your level is, um, what your interest and skill set is. But I think any sort of um, program that promotes leadership in women and URMs, I think um, bringing up uh, folks, let's say, before they even get to college that to expose them to medicine and the joys of medicine, I think those are all uh, amazing ways to help change what our leadership looks like. But I also think that our leaders need to lead in that way. And um, I think that can be hard um, and uncomfortable. So I, I think it's going to take efforts at all levels. I think we know about the problem. Um, and I think we need to keep talking about it, but more importantly, I think as you point out, we need to begin to act. And I think that's happening. I do. Um, I think change is hard, but I, I think we still have a lot more work to do than we've done so far. The interests that I have currently are, I have, um, run a multidisciplinary team um, for vascular malformations, which is actually only, we treat pediatric and adult patients and we're one of only two centers in the country that actually have a multi-D team for adults. Um, I'm very interested in venous disease uh, and uh, renal vein compression or nutcracker syndrome, something that I write about and really care for a lot of patients with, and then cerebrovascular disease. There's a book coming out um, that we're editing about cerebrovascular disease in the TCAR era.